At a young age, he was seen as a gifted child with a bright future. Fascinated by magic and the mysterious ability to communicate with animals led to a future where this boy would assume a new persona. This fascination and affinity with magic gave birth to an unbound passion which created a magician that commands not only stringless puppets but a vast array of mysterious creatures. This is the world of Mask Magician Harry. Mask Magician Harry is the brand new VR for Pale Moon that is ready to bring a new unique show to the clan. His first ability allows him to set the stage for his grandiose act as once he enters the field, all the additional rearguard circle will turn into the stage. This will mean that all the actual circles will stack underneath each other into one additional circle that adds the power on top of each other. This will limit the amount of units that you can call to the field, but this means that at one circle will accumulate a, a massive amount of power. Now Harry's second ability allows him to flood the board with some amazing new companions. As once per turn for the cost of one counterblast and a discard from hand, he can call up to two cards with Magia Dolls in his card name from its soul, and those units get an additional 5k power. However, if the opponent is at grade 3 or higher, he can unleash his full magical capabilities as he can call upwards to four different cards with Magia Dolls in her card name, allowing him to set up the stage for his final attacks. Now Harry's abilities allows him to flood the board with units from the soul without wasting cards from his hand. But to see his full capabilities, we have to see what these Magia Dolls actually can do and what other units can use the stage for a very special act. The first Magia Doll in this lineup is Magia Doll Dark Side Mirror Master. All these Magia Dolls will share a similar skill trait that is that once they are retired from the Guardian Circle, you can put those cards into the soul. Now this synergizes perfectly with Harry as once we go into Harry and use its ability, we can call them out of the soul. So this this allows us to use these cards in a defensive way and then later use them in an offensive way. But on top of that, our grade 2 counterpart Magia Dolls has the added bonus that we can cycle them as we can keep intercepting with them, put them back into the soul and then put them back onto the field with Harry the next turn and keep cycling through that interaction. But every Magia Doll has a unique ability and in Dark Side Mirror Master's case, it allows us to counter charge whenever she is called with Harry, making Harry's main ability turn into a discard instead of a counter blast and a discard. Card. Now the second Magia Doll for Harry is Magia Doll Flying Periton, yet another grade 1. But this card allows us to get some extra draws as once it's placed by an ability with Harry in card name, we get this extra draw. So this card together with Dark Side Mirror Master allows us to refund the entire cost of Harry. So if we call these two grade ones out of the soul for Harry's abilities, we actually did that for free. And if we do that once our opponents at grade 3 and also call down the grade 2s, we actually get a lot of units onto the board for effectively no cost. So these two grade 1s are really good to keep our engine going turn after turn after turn. Now if we take a look at the grade 2 Magia Dolls, the first one that we see is Magia Doll Prana. This is a really good Magia Doll to up the power levels of our rearguard columns as well as vanguard columns as it allows us to give Prana an extra 10k, but also Harry an extra 10k. And that added with the extra 5 5k that Harry gives to all our Magia Dolls allows us to create really solid high numbers that can easily surpass 22k, 23k and even into the 30k numbers. So even defensive triggers will not stop our onslaught of attacks that we can provide. Now the final Magia Doll card that we have is Magia Doll Lunatic Dragon. This card allows us to give a little bit of extra field control as we can put any card of our opponent's side into the soul. This can be really good if our opponent doesn't have ways to utilize the soul for their cost of abilities so we can disrupt their little plays. But you need to be careful because if our opponent can utilize their soul in any type of way then this could potentially give them more fuel and can therefore be a really dangerous play to utilize. So be very careful when employing this card's effect. Now the Magia Dolls aren't the only cards that Harry can command, as we also got some cards that interact really nicely with the stage. And one such a card is his Faithful Dragon, that is Starry Prop Dragon. And Starry Prop Dragon has the ability to become a giant beater as long as we have a lot of Axel Gift Markers stacked onto the stage, or if we have a wider range of Magia Dolls onto the field. And if we fulfill its condition, it can be a really 
good beater that comes with high power, a critical, and a sentinel guard restrict. So this is basically your win condition. Now the way how we can utilize this dragon is with Harry's second best companion, that is Lore Pigeon Pop. This card is the way how you utilize your stage to its most capacity, as it allows you to multi-tack on that stage and then immediately search out the dragon for the final swing for that turn. And it's also a really good card to set up your soul for your Magia Doll cards, as it can put any grade one or grade two that hit the drop zone back into the soul. So Lore Pigeon Pop is not only a really good consistency card, but it's also a really good card to finish out your games. Now the final card that we're going to highlight is probably the best support card for Harry, which is Card Dealer Jacqueline. This card allows us to search out any of our Magia Doll cards, as well as our Lore Pigeon Pops, which both are our important cards for the deck. But not only that, this card also allows you to set up your soul, so you can put any Magia Dolls into the soul that you're missing for your Harry plays, or you can put a certain combo piece into the soul that you can then fetch out later if you have the correct card for that. So this is your most important grade 2 card that supports your entire engine itself. Now that you've seen the entire Magia Doll engine as well as the supporting cast around Harry, let's talk about the basics and let's start with the resources. As you've seen, the resources aren't really that big of a deal for Harry, as Harry's ability costs a Counter Blast and a Discard. But both grade ones of the Magia Dolls allows you to refund both costs. So if you set up your soul correctly, Harry's ability effectively becomes free. Then on top of that, the only card that uses Counter Blast or any kind of resources are Card Dealer Jacqueline and Lore Pigeon Pop, both using a Counter Blast. Now you will only use Jacqueline if you're missing certain pieces for your engine and probably most of your resources will go towards Lore Pigeon Pop as that's your main multi-attack strategy that also allows you to go into your win condition that is Starry Pop Dragon. But with the fact that we can make Harry's ability free of charge means that we probably will only use one counter blast a turn in the usual strategy for harry now soul isn't really resource in this deck as we don't really use our soul for resources but it is a very important aspect of this whole engine as we need specific cards into the soul to actually do our plays most importantly the Magia Dolls themselves. Now as for the trigger lineup in this deck, you probably will go more towards a crit based playstyle as we can create really high numbers as Harry can put an extra 10k on our side columns and with Prana being able to put another 10k on those columns makes it very easy to accumulate a 37k attack right out of the get-go. And that on top of a 22k Vanguard that can potentially be boosted by a 13k booster and a potential 40k dragon or higher on the axle marker that is the stage means that we can definitely hit really good numbers so adding extra crits on top of that can really close the game but draws are definitely not an overrated commodity for this deck as you have probably noticed we need a lot of pieces to make the deck work we need all the different market dolls in our in our soul as well as we need access to at least one lore pigeon pop Sure, Jacqueline allows us to get those cards, but if we do not get Jacqueline, then we'll probably not be able to get those cards as well. So having a couple of draws in the deck can at least increase the overall consistency of our overall game plan. Now, as for the markers, both Axel 1 and Axel 2 have a direct function in this deck. Axel 2 is, of course, the obvious play if you want to increase the consistency as we can draw multiple cards. And with Story Pop Dragon being able to create an extra marker once it enters the field, means we get that extra draw on top of that Axel Circle. So we can really ramp up the amount of draws, also increasing the consistency of our deck. But if you do the math, you will notice that on the first Great Free turn, once you create your stages, you will come 10k power short with the dragon because you create one Axel 2 marker, which is 5k. The moment that the dragon enters that circle, you create another one, which is 10k power in total. And then if you have all four Magia Dolls onto the board, that's a total of 20k on top of that, making the dragon a 30k beater. But it needs to be 40k or higher to get its guard restrict as well as critical. So that means... If you want to hit the threshold, you need to hit a trigger in your drive checks with your Vanguard, as of course you can first attack with the Vanguard before you attack with the Dragon. So if you go with Exo 2, that leaves you to RNG to actually get that full attack off at the first grade free turn. Now, if you went for Exo 1, you can 100% get this power off as long as you have all four Magia Dolls onto the board, as you will get 20k power of your Axel Markers and then another 20k power of your Magia Dolls. Now, with all the fundamental basics out of the way, let's dive straight into the different builds that we can make. 
And we're gonna start off with a very generic build that's probably the best place to start your Harry adventure. So here we have the basic lineup that you can see for any Harry build. We have all the Magia dolls as well as Lord Pigeon Pop and Car Dealer Jacqueline. The only new inclusion that we see is Masquerade Bunny. This card is the generic Great Free Searcher and it's a very important piece in this deck as we only run four Great Freeze, that is our Harrys. Because if we don't get Harry, we won't do anything for the deck. So that's why Masquerade Bunny is a really important piece of this deck. And also as a Vanguard booster allows us to hit really good numbers even on our center column. Now as the main strategy for the deck, it is what you would expect. It's to set up your Magia Dolls into the soul so that Harry can call them out. And then you can utilize Lore Pigeon Pop together with Starry Pop Dragon to unleash the powerful multi attacks to overwhelm your opponent. Now use Jacqueline as an early game tool to set up your soul to either fetch your Lore Pigeon Pops or to get more of the Magia Dolls itself. And keep in mind, you don't have to put the cards that you fetch with Jacqueline into the soul. You can even put other cards that are in your hand into the soul. Now, try to combine the great ones with Harry as much as possible to make the skill cost as free as possible. And of course, don't be afraid to guard with your Magia Dolls early on. And especially with your great twos, as you can just call them down and then intercept them away. But be careful of your opponent because they can potentially just attack into them or use control effects to just retire them from the field. But overall, this deck isn't really that special in strategy-wise as it's just employing this standard Harry strategy that you would come to expect of all the cards that Harry has access to. But there is a way to change it up a little bit and give the deck a bit more consistency with a different support card. As in this list, we see basically the entire same engine that we saw in the previous list, but certain cards are at a lower quantity to make room for another great one, which is Moonlight Melody Tamer Betty. This great one is a support card for the whole Magia Doll engine. Her Fangard skill allows us to get more control over our soul as we get some more draws and we can put any card into the soul. This is basically equivalent to riding a grade 1 Magia Doll as we can put a grade 1 Magia Doll into the soul itself. But on top of that we get one extra draw from our deck. Meaning we dig one extra card deeper into our deck so we have higher chance of getting to all our key pieces. But her second ability is where her full capability shines as it allows her to search the top three cards of her deck for any Magia Doll and we can use this from turn one as a rear guard unit and we can utilize that turn after turn after turn. So if we can place this onto the field on turn one, we have three turns of effective use out of her to set up her soul as efficiently as possible. And this helps us to not only increase the consistency of hitting those Magia Dolls, but it also allows us to filter our deck for triggers. Now there is a downside to this card that you could potentially put other important cards like Lord Pigeon Pop, Jacqueline, Starry Pop Dragon, as well as Harry himself to the bottom of the deck. But with cards like Lord Pigeon Pop that search our deck or Jacqueline that also search our deck and Masquerade Bunny that checks the top five that then shuffles our decks allows us to potentially get those cards to the top of the deck again. So utilize those cards together with Betty to have full control over your deck as well as your soul. Now as for the rest of the deck, it's basically the entire same strategy that we've seen in the previous build as Harry does a particular playstyle and it does that particular playstyle effectively. But sadly, sacrifices the option to employ other powerful tricks that Pilmoon has access to. But that doesn't mean it's completely isolated from the clan. There is an option to utilize some other cards to its full potential to make Harry even more deadly. Because let's take a look at a different list that really takes advantage of this stage itself. As we can see here, it's the exact same list as the first list, but we see a interesting addition in the Great Free lineup. We can see two copies of Nightmare Doll Alice. Anybody that knows Pill Moon knows what this card can do. It's a unit that can attack, and after it attacks, it puts itself into the soul and it allows you to call out any unit that isn't a great free onto the field again. Now this card works perfectly with this deck because you can do a couple of interesting things with this card. You can call Alice to the Axel Circle, so the stage, meaning this can be a really giant beater if you went for Axel 1 or even in the Axel 2 case if you already could accumulate a couple of Axel markers. Then once she's done attacking, you can put her into the soul and you can call out the Starry Pop Dragon himself because he is a grade 4, not a grade 3. So effectively, Alice becomes an extra copy of Lore Pigeon Pop because it functions the same way. The only difference is, is that in order for Alice to do that, that means the Starry Pop Dragon needs to be in the soul already. 
The way how we can put them into the soul is of course with card dealer Jacqueline. So if we utilize these three cards together, we can have this interesting interaction between the cards themselves. But we can take it one step further because Alice can also call down a grade two. So if we have a lore pigeon pop into the soul, then we can call Alice to the Exo Circle, attack with Alice, then put her into the soul, call out the lore pigeon pop, attack with the lore pigeon pop, and then use lore pigeon pop to search out the starry pop dragon and then attack with the starry pop dragon. Meaning you effectively get free attacks onto that stage which already gives massive power boost to any unit that is on that stage itself. This allows the deck to basically do the same thing but add one extra devastating attack on top of everything. So depending on what type of playstyle you like and how much risk you want to take, you can employ all kinds of different tricks with Harry to certain degrees. Now these lists aren't the only things that you can do with Harry because there are a couple of more cards that you can employ. A good interesting option to look at is Golden Beast Tamer. This card is another way to multi-tag with Impale Moon. But this grade 3 isn't utilized as a support grade 3 like Alice to, uh, to increase the multi tax of your deck. This is mainly there as a finisher after you utilize Harry for a couple of turns. Because if you utilize this card, you can therefore get more multi attacks on top of your stage. As you can combine this with Lower Pigeon Pop as well as Starry Pop Dragon to actually do some really good damage at the end game. So this is basically a finisher for the deck. Another interesting card to look at is Silver Thorn Beast Tamer Dorian. This one-off card can be really interesting for the Harry engine because Harry wants to call down all the Magia Dolls from the soul every single turn. But as seen as only the great twos can put themselves back into the soul means the great ones are a bit tricky to get back into the soul turn after turn. You can potentially set up more into the soul via different ways or you can utilize Lord Pigeon Pop to get them into the soul. But another really good way is with Dorian herself as she forcefully put all your cards into the soul. So having access to a Dorian means you can at least get two effective turns out of all your Magia Dolls without jumping through some hoops. Now as we've seen Harry is a really interesting new deck for Pill Moon. It allows the clan to have a very peculiar playstyle that is very Pill Moon-esque but the only negative downside about this particular playstyle right now is that it's very limited in what it can do as seen as you have a lot of important key pieces. You need to have the Magia Dolls, you need to have access to Lore Pigeon Pop as well as Tar Pop Dragon, which results in the fact that you don't have a lot of wiggle room to incorporate other cards within the deck itself. So it all comes down to player preference and your personal playstyle to add some unique flair to the Harry deck itself. But nonetheless, it's a very exciting new deck for Pill Moon, and it's probably the start of something special. Use this video and the contents provided in this video as a starting ground to develop your own personal deck and your own strategies. If you're interested in other deck spotlights, then check out this playlist right here, where we go over many other different decks, as well as decks from VBT09 Butterfly the Moonlight. I wanna thank my Patreon supporters over Patreon for making this video possible on the channel. You guys are amazing, as well as you guys watching at home. If you do want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel, you can go to patreon.com slash Vanguard Insider and become a Patreon today. But with that said, I'm Mr. Time Leap, and I see you guys in the next one!